Hi folks, welcome to Patrick Scale Studio. My name's Patrick, I'll be your host. Um, this is Build Video 13B, I believe. Uh, it's gonna be a short one, uh, pretty much just kinda showing off um, some progress that I've made. Uh, there really wasn't a whole lot of anything that was worthwhile to record while I was doing it um, because either um, my head was right here with the part underneath or is me holding a part and just airbrushing. Um, nothing particularly tricky or anything like that, but with some of the small assemblies, I find myself using the optimizer more and more, which means I pretty much have to be right on top of it with a light close at hand. Um, but again, there's nothing really tricky, anything uh, worthy of mention or anything like that that uh, tripped me up or you know gave me any problems. Uh, most of the stuff that would have given me any problems was in building the uh, actual parts, the mast and this right here. After I got it all painted, um, I put uh, the, some of the assemblies together as the, for the pieces that were already painted such as the little railings and well I'll tell you what actually let's just get to it so you can see. I'm going to move this aside. All right. So here, first of all, is the painted part of the superstructure that goes on top of the bridge. All right. So everything got uh, its uh, primer. That uh, and the primer was the uh, Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 in black because um, I like that black basing. I like having that really super dark base. Um, and then being able to lighten things up as I want uh, and give you just a little bit of false shadows. After that, of course, then I laid down some XF24 really super dark gray um, and then hit the XF53 for the non-skid color right here for the uh, horizontal decking that sailors might be walking on. Uh, and then after that, uh, went in with the XF12 and again tried to add a little bit of depth through uh, some kind of variations in my spray pattern. I didn't go uniformly, I didn't do heavy coats or anything like that, I went in pretty light coats. Um, so that's this piece and once we're ready this piece will sit on top of the bridge like so. Now the bridge is also going to get uh, railings around it um, and when we still have to put some windows and stuff in there um, but I'll go through kind of the remaining checklist here when all is said and done on this. So the next thing we will get to is going to be the mast. Here is the finished mast assembly. Um, there wasn't too much more added to this since you saw it last uh, as far as parts except for a railing here, here, railing down here, railing right there, and this railing right up here. Um, and that's it. That's the only thing I added to this um, since the last time you saw Oh, sorry, I take that back. Except for some of the little plastic, this, this, that, and that. A, a couple little doodads here and there. Uh, this one is kind of painted in a sky blue color uh, because when I looked online on the resources, that's what I saw. It stood out and I double checked and double checked, triple checked, quadruple checked, and sure enough, I finally came across a shot where it shows that that is sky blue on one side of it. I'm not sure what the system is, but uh, the color is there. The rest of this is pretty gray. But that is that. So this also has the non-skid there on the horizontal decking areas. Um, and I followed pretty much the same pattern as I did on these pieces here where they got the Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 in black. And then I went with some XF24 and hit underneath some parts right there. Um, trying not to eliminate all of the black if possible and just kind of letting some of that darkness show through. Um, but again, adding uh, you know a little bit more depth, uh, trying to add a little bit more contrast in the end with the final color uh, by preparing with that uh, pre-shading. And then I went back in and 
kit all of this with the XF53 for the non-skid colors. Um, and then carefully masked, which was not fun, and that took an entire day because you're working around all of these really tiny, really delicate assemblies. And then after that, I went back in with the XF12 uh, and tried not to spray it at an upward angle. I tried to spray it kind of at a uh, even horizontal level or from above, uh, just to make sure that, again, the upper parts got the most concentration of the color, uh, while the lower uh, undersurfaces got the least amount, again, to kind of help force a little bit of contrast there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside before I drop it and break it into a million pieces. And then we'll go ahead and go into what we got left here. Um, I made a quick to-do list, so it's kind of like my punch-out list here. Um, one, we're going to add some detail uh, decals. So some of the decals that i got to go on are going to be, well, let's get this here. Can we see us okay without the glare? All right. So some of the decals we're going to add is going to be, let's see, up, for, up front, it might be right here. It looks like that is decal 7, and on the uh, starboard side, that is decal 6. There's decal 9, number 9's here. Um, we got the crest here, which is 32 on either side. So we got there's not a lot of decals to go on there. Um, but we got to get those on. And after we get those on, then our next step after that is going to be securing that main superstructure piece right here down to the hull. And once we get this secured down to the hull, glued in and it's set up and everything like that, then I'm going to make sure I add a little bit of putty right here where this meets the hull. Uh, what I'm counting on is there's not going to be a large gap. There's going to be a very, very small, minute gap. We put in a little bit of putty, uh, probably the Vallejo plastic putty that'll wipe off with a little bit of water. And then we'll go in and lightly sand everything to blend it in nicely. Um, tape it off, prime it, respray it, and then re-clear coat it. So once we get decals on, we get this secured, we get this blended into the hull, then we're going to go into the aft superstructure or the funnel assembly, which are these parts right here. We'll get those on. They're, I looked ahead in the construction. It does not look like this is going to be a terribly long affair, and there's no blending or anything like that because it's just pure deck all around it, so that's good. Uh, also, looks like there's not really any gaps or anything like this around here. Everything looks really clean on this. So that's also great. So after we get this put together, assembled, and painted, we're going to get it glued down to the hull. And then we're going to clear coat everything again um, just to make sure that, uh, one, all the colors match up, all the colors blended, everything looks like it's one ship and not just cobbled together out of different parts like a Frankenboat. Um, and then with that uh, second clear coat, we're going to go in and do a pin wash, and then we're going to do some oil weathering, and then we might even do a little bit of highlight weathering um, just to kind of help bring some of that detail out. Um, after that, everything gets a flat coat, and then we start planning on the rigging. Um, this ship has got from that mast assembly, let me bring it back again, as much as it has got um, lines that run from one of these assemblies up here down to the front, these two little A-frame looking pieces here in the front of the bridge. It's got three lines that run down to there, and then on the back side, it's got a bunch more lines that run down to um, one of our viewers called them the flag lockers, and it's on the main bridge assembly right here. After and I had to look this up. I had to do a lot of studying. These are the flag lockers here. So I'm gonna. 
there's going to be a lot of lines coming from um, one of these assemblies here down to these flag lockers here. And I actually do know what these are called. I just the term's not coming to mind right now. I put together some wooden ships, and I believe a lot of the terms are interchangeably used from the 16, 15, 1600s all the way up until now. Um, anyway, so after the rigging planning, and the rigging planning is going to entail probably getting some lines attached to this right here and kind of left hanging, dangling out in the breeze until we get everything glued down. Then we'll put in the bridge windows in here. After we get the bridge windows put in there, we will start putting this all together. After everything there is all put together, then we will get this pushed into or secured to the final wooden base, which uh, finally it's warming up enough. I should be able to go outside and sand that down and finish that up. Uh, it's, I'm glad it's warming up. If I sanded it in here, I pro my better half would probably hang me out to dry because the sawdust would be in the air and everywhere. So it's good. So after we get that secured to the wooden base, then we will start putting on the final deck details, including all the railings, the five inch gun. We'll get the helo done. Um, and after that, we'll call it a day. So uh, again, sorry this was such a short video. Nevertheless, I'm happy you were able to join me on this. I'll kind of see where I'm at in the process. Uh, more assembly videos coming coming soon, though, as far as actually what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, um, you're able to point out uh, something I might be doing wrong or something I might be calling the wrong thing, please leave me that feedback uh, below this video. I really like uh, reading all those comments. I like getting better and knowing more things. So until I see you next time, happy modeling and be safe.